and you're listening to the event Santa Cruz radio show on KSQD Santa Cruz 90.7 FM. And we're going to start off the show with Natalia. Wait, Natalia. Yeah. Okay, That's just make right. sure I said it right. <laughs> Natalia, I was going to say Natalie. I got um, Natalia Lockwood. So you are with. Wait, what is the name of your real estate group? So I'm with David Ling Real Estate, which okay. is my broker, but my team name is the Coastal Bay Team. Exactly. So how did how did that like team come about? So my my mentor is Bob Hinkle. He's okay. been in the business for a long time. Yeah. And he started Coastal Bay years ago. And when I came on to the company, we he started being my mentor basically from the beginning. And so I joined that team. I've been on it ever since, and it's evolved and turned into something bigger. Um, not necessarily more people, but yeah. just kind of dialed in the, the branding and made it more known and put a lot more energy into making Coastal Bay an official team. Is, did you bring that aspect of like the branding? Because you're from like a communications marketing mm -hmm. background, right? So. Yeah, I definitely think that I played a, a, a large role in getting it to where it's at right now. Uh, before, Coastal Bay was mostly just a website that you could search properties on. Okay. And, um, you know, we organized the back end of that website. But in the last year and a half, we've been really focusing on making Coastal Bay an official team, putting Coastal Bay out there as a team, putting it on our signs. You know, we redid the website. We made it a lot more user-friendly. And um, we brought someone else on the team, my partner, Melanie. So it's myself, Melanie, and Bob Hinkle, and okay. we, we run the team. Now, do you guys have a focus of a certain kind of real estate? Mostly uh, mostly beach homes. We, we definitely, uh, you know, like to focus on beach homes or yeah. say that we specialize, but I've sold homes of all kinds all over the county, Bob as well. Bob okay. kind of focuses on larger development opportunities, so he works with a lot of uh, developers and, you know, bigger transactions, mm -hmm. and Melanie and I do a lot of the residential, residential sales, and, you know, together I think we cover a lot of bases and, you know, become a really f strong team. Cool. So what is like the, the life of a realtor? You're probably like Saturdays are busy. Don't listen to anything you see on TV. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Those shows kind of frustrate me because it's, yeah. it's a lot different than, you know, real life. But, um, you know, my daily, my daily is mostly just staying, staying focused. You know, I think about real estate everywhere I go, everywhere I'm at, everyone yeah. I'm talking to. It's, it's always on my mind. So I think, um, you know, just having the mindset of being self-disciplined and being able to come in, into the office every day even though you don't have someone telling you to be there. Yeah. You have to be kind of self-driven, you know, and you have to have a plan, a schedule, and, and um, you know, be comfortable doing it on your own. I can imagine, too. I mean, it's, it's there's a stress level to, there, uh, to it because you're dealing with someone's home. <laughs> yeah, it's not like, and they're like, this is the number one thing in their life, this transaction. And, you know, you do it every, you know, multiple ones a month. This is their one big thing of, mm -hmm. like, the, the, the whole five years. Right. Like, yeah, so, I mean, does, is it a little stressful? It's absolutely stressful. I mean, it's just as much, you know, rewarding as it is stressful, but you're dealing with people's shelter. You're yeah. dealing with their money. You're dealing with a, a lot of, you know, really intense, you know, situations for them. So... Keeping that in mind, it's not always smooth. It's not. It's, it's no. almost never smooth. It's it's <laughs> rare when it is smooth. Yeah. It's more weird when nothing goes wrong than if something goes wrong. And when I say go wrong, I just mean there's always hurdles. Every yeah. transaction is different. Every home is different. So things come up. I mean, and that's why it's good to have a real realtor that knows what they're doing instead of like this, you know, online mm -hmm. some way because. Because it is. I know I've done so much real estate myself. It's like a realtor, a good realtor, is worth so much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you're when you're helping someone with their with their sale or their purchase, you know, to them, this is everything to them. And you might have ten clients at once that are all kind of needing your attention. But I think what's important is you take it seriously. You put in just as much effort from f to one client to the other. It doesn't matter if it's a million dollar home or a hundred thousand dollar. I've sold a hundred thousand dollar manufactured homes. I've sold multi-million dollar properties. I sold homes in the mountains, you know, all yeah. kinds of things. And every single transaction is important. Every single client is just as important. And I think anytime you can be educating them along the way, 
you know, you're helping them know what to expect and, you know, to be prepared for if something does come up. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, it, what is it that you enjoy about real estate? I mean, like, you seem a very smart person. You could do a lot of things that, you know, whatever you like to do. Um, why was it real estate? Real estate has just been one of those things that I've always kind of been interested in. When I went to college, I wasn't sure that I wanted to do real estate yet when I got in. And I kind of started taking communications courses at Cabrillo and fell in love with it. And then when I transferred to San Jose State, I majored in communication and it was there that I decided real estate is my passion. I love homes. I love working with people. I love design. I love architecture. I love also just the fascinated by construction, you know, just homes in general yeah. and people in general. And so when I first started, I started out as an assistant, which was perfect. And anyone who's thinking of getting into real estate, I would recommend finding a mentor, finding someone who can take you under their wing, be their assistant, learn the ropes, and see if this is something you actually want to do. You can so when you're assistant, is that just like, and just kind of helping with their transactions? Or is it like, what is an assistant there's, in real well, there's, estate? There's different levels of assistance. Yeah. And I think the most uh, the most beneficial your assistant could be is if, if they are licensed and maybe they're they're new in the business, but you know, you're very limited if you don't have a real estate license. You can't open up the properties, you can't write up oh, contracts, yeah. you can't even really negotiate or talk about details with clients. So, um, you know, if you get your real estate license and you become someone's assistant, you're most likely kind of doing paperwork on the back end or you're holding open houses, you're organizing you know, marketing stuff, maybe handling their social media, maybe writing up contracts or just doing transaction coordinating. There's all different levels. And I think part of it is depending on the agent and how much help they need or where they need their help. But it really does help if you can find someone to kind of show you the ropes for a while. And I think that's kind of what got me in such a good position was I started working as an assistant and that agent was very busy and so I kind of got thrown in with the wolves, so to say. Yeah. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot in the year and a half that I was working as an assistant and finally got my license and decided to go out on my own. And I've been doing pretty, pretty well ever since. Yeah. So you mentioned social media. How has social media changed the real estate world? Anyway, because I, mean, I don't think that many realtors have actually embraced it as as much as you have mm -hmm. um, I mean is it like a big part of your activity it's a, it's a huge part of, of my business yeah. and I think a lot of it has to do with the generation you know yeah. you have these these old school agents who have been around for a long time they don't really need social media or they don't think they need social media or they're just refusing to learn social media yeah. and you know I think this is where a lot of people limit themselves and I know it's frustrating when you don't really understand it but there are people out there that coach you that you can, you know, hire to help do this stuff or an assistant. And social media has changed real estate like it's changed everything in the world. It's changed a lot, you yeah. know, and it changes the way we interact. It changes the way we meet people. It changes the fact that everyone wants all their information right away, you know, and this is just the world we live in. And if you're not on top of your online, you know, response time and, and getting back to people and getting people the information they need, they're going to go on to someone else. And that's just because information is so easily available. Yeah. You know, I think also though, too, it, it, it lets you kind of know who your realtor is. Yes. And someone, and it's like, I mean, this, I've met you twice now. This is the same time I've actually met you, but I feel like I kind of know you and your husband just right. because of social media. We were just talking about this like amazing crate that your husband built. Um, you know, the most talented man I've probably seen. He's um, very talented. Yeah. Actually, I recognized you guys first from your dogs yes. when we were at Pono the other day. Those dogs get a lot of attention. Yeah. <laughs> no, they are cute. But um, yeah, I feel like that it makes it makes it more easy into like, okay, I already feel like I know you somewhat. Well, and it's then personable, we can, you yeah. know, and when you don't, when you don't have constant contact with people, but you have social media, yeah. you feel like you're staying in contact, even if you're not talking, even if you're not connecting directly, yeah. you kind of build this trust and this rapport with someone. And so my style being a millennial and having kind of grown up in this generation, and kind of understanding it. Anytime I have a new client or if I meet someone, I add them on social media because I want to stay connected with people. Yeah. And it's an easy way for my clients to remember me as well. So majority That's of people point. who buy a home or do a real estate transaction, 
they get asked later in life if there's a survey do you did you like your agent or would you use them again majority of them said yes if they could remember their name and m most people just don't stay connected and so no. social media is a great tool for that and people buy a house again they yes. usually don't buy one house yeah, five to ten years you know and it depends I mean people come back around I mean I've been doing real estate for seven years now and I have repeat business already there are people coming back around and yeah I've sold multiple homes too you know so it's it's a great avenue for people if you're you know looking to stay connected or even if you're in that older generation or you're just you know not really that into it having it is great and hiring someone to use it because people will look you up and just yeah. because you aren't very familiar with it they probably are, and it's good to have. I know that's what I'm going to look for. Yeah, I'm exactly. I'm going to look at their social media. All their, you know, usually most people I deal with. Okay, mm -hmm. let me look at. I, I I go to like Facebook first to see. Okay, let me see. Yeah. And they're like, okay, they only have they last time they posted was you know 2012. Yeah. Or something like. Then it just like. Not a good sign. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I understand some people don't like it. You know, like. I might not want to do face if I wasn't working, maybe I wouldn't do Facebook as much. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But Well, it's one of those things where you just have to be comfortable with not posting anything that you wouldn't want your whole world to see. And yeah. that's pretty easy. I mean, the main thing is just using it for the benefits and then you can you can go as far as you want with it or not. Yeah. So what is like next for you? So you've been in real estate seven years, you got you have you're a part of this team, you've rebranded yourself. Is there some like like you would like to see yourself at a certain point at this point of life mm -hmm. in real estate? Have you ever thought it's, about that? It's interesting. You know, I have people asking me about, you know, what's the next step? Are we going to make Coastal Bay our own brokerage? Are we going to go out on our own? And I'm personally very happy with David Ling. I, I'm part of a really well-known local company yeah. that's established. They have a, a great reputation. They offer a lot of amenities for, for or, you know, um, a lot of... Uh, benefits for us being a part of their team and it's a family-run business and so I personally don't have any you know uh, immediate goals to do anything like that but as far as personal goals I you know my goal is making the team better and stronger and not necessarily having 20 people working with us but having people who are dedicated people who are you know wanting to put 100% of what they're doing into it just like I am and so I would just say continuing to focus on the team and doing a better job for our clients and, you know, continuing to evolve because that's what it takes in this, in this market and in this time in the world. Yeah, you, you probably be can't able to be evolve. stagnant. You have to keep on learning, yes. like, new, like, regulations, laws. Things are always or, changing. Yeah. you got to be ready to change with it. God, the rates just went down today. Oh, gosh, rates are great. For anyone who's thinking of refinancing or buying, or buying. I mean, this is it's a great time to borrow money right now. The rates are down. They're going down. They're probably going to keep going down into next year. So, um, you know, if, you, if you're not trying to buy, maybe look into refinancing right now. I'm going to be refinancing soon. It's you a great time. You convinced me to refinance now? You should. Yeah. You definitely should. <laughs> okay, so if people want to find out um, more about you, where, where would they go to find out about your team? So, CoastalBayRealEstate.com okay. is our website. You'll see a little bit about myself, our team on there. You could also go on Facebook if you just search Natalia Lockwood. I have a Natalia Lockwood Realtor Facebook page. And I also have Instagram. Instagram has been one of those things that have just been growing and growing, and you'd be surprised how much real estate has become a part of that growth as well on Instagram. It's my favorite social media. It's, it's great. And yeah. you know what? It, it gives people a lot of what they want, which is just the important information and none of the extra baggage that sometimes Facebook gives you when you get yeah. you know people on there that just want to talk and put their yeah. opinions. and. You know, so you can go on to Natalia Lockwood on Instagram or just go to CoastalBayRealEstate.com and you'll be able to search properties. You can even type in your property address and find out what a value is for your home. Oh, cool. It won't be as accurate as if I was doing it myself, but it'll give you a general Maybe. estimate. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so get a better estimate. Call Natalia. Yep. And for those people, if I had to give any, you know, tips right now or any recommendations, I would say for the people who think that buying or, you know, buying a property is just totally out of their reach. It's never going to happen. Every time I talk to people who say, I can never buy, I can never do Not that. I'll, I'll never be able yeah. to afford a home here. Not true. There are deals. There are deals out there. There are opportunities for people. I was once one of those people not that long ago that said I'd never be able to buy or didn't think I could. My husband didn't have any credit when he met me. Now we both have great credit. We have a home under our belt. And it's just, it's a stepping stone thing. You take one step, you keep moving forward. 
when you work with a good team, they'll give you recommendations on how to get to that point. They're not just going to say, no, you can't buy now. They're going to say, this is what you need to do to get yourself in a better position. I was told that in yeah. my 20s, like 23. It's like, no, sorry, you don't have enough credit. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. You'd, be, you'd be surprised how fast you can get your credit up. It's really not that hard. So anyone who thinks it's out of their reach, talk to a lender, talk to an agent they trust, give me a call. I'll give you some tips on how to get there. Great. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Natalia Lockwood. And thank you. Give her a call. Let's get you into a house. Okay. Well, you're listening to KSQD Santa Cruz 90.7. Let's hear a little Coffus Brothers. Can you find me a house for my family of four? <laughs> four.